Hi, I'm Tobias Goebel, Director of Mobile Strategy here at Voxeo. I would like to demo to you Voxeo CXP13, basically show you how to use it to build a multi-channel app from scratch uh, within just 15 minutes. What I will do is start off building a mobile web app and then add um, an interactive voice as well as an interactive text component to that app within just a few extra minutes. All right, so let's get started. What you see here is CXP Developer, our uh, uh, service creation environment in which you essentially build out your application flow. It is a plugin into the well-known Eclipse framework. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new project here on the left-hand side in the repository browser. Uh, Right-click on Project, select New, and I'm going to call this project Demo. Uh, finish it, it'll show up here on the left-hand side, and I can double-click to essentially open this project. What you see now is a, a list of um, kind of predefined objects that will um, uh, ultimately uh, constitute your application. Right now it's a pretty small list of pre-configured objects. So it's essentially an empty uh, object browser that you see here. Um, I'm going to start by creating a module that will act as the container of our application. Module objects in Voxio CXB are essentially containers for uh, subflows, for sub-applications. The application that we're going to build here is uh, going to uh, ask the user for their account number and then um, lead them to a main menu of several options. This is supposed to become uh, a banking portal later, so I will basically mock up some of the options just to kind of give you an idea of how this will look eventually as a mobile app. So to start off, um, I will create a new module. Um, I will give this object a name. Uh, let me call it start in this case and save and close this object right away um, so that I can switch over and look at this object in the so-called uh, uh, dialog view, which is a graphical representation of your flow. Now, uh, what I will do is I will start off building a web application. So what I want to do is I want to put the GUI here in the web mode, which essentially means that it will hide anything that is not related to web development, so anything for IVR and interactive text applications. Uh, I will do that later. I will add that functionally after building out the web flow. So let me focus, let me change the, the view here. Um, and from now on, I will only see fields and objects and labels that are relevant to building out a web application, a mobile web application, essentially. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an input object. I'm going to drag this, put it here in the sequence. The input object will ask the, uh, the user for their account number. As you can see here, uh, the input consists of three main sections, the page content top, some input elements, and the page content bottom. So this will ultimately constitute your, your mobile web page. I will call this get account number. As page content top, um, I can define some HTML. I can uh, enter some text. So this can be you know, full markup that will ultimately be rendered um, at, at the top of your page. So I will create a little. Uh, uh, h1 tag here and say welcome. In addition, I need to define my input elements. So in this case, I want to capture an account number. So I'm going to call this ac number and I need to link a variable in this field which would ultimately hold the value of my account number. So I'm creating a new variable, calling that also account number, closing out the variable. So now it is linked here in the variable field. For this input element, I want to uh, use a widget. So the uh, input object provides an embedded widget object through which I can now um, select essentially what type of input this would be. Now I want this to be a text input, but as data type, I want this to be a number so that on a mobile phone, um, the uh, display would essentially open up a keyboard, the numeric keyboard for entering numbers. As you see, as I changed the data type, some other fields here showed up. So I can now give this a label. Uh, I can give this a tooltip. What I will do is um, basically uh, use a placeholder, which will be embedded in the uh, resulting text field. So as the placeholder, I will say, enter your eight-digit account number. Um, I can obviously also provide some, some validation patterns here. Um, I will skip those steps, but I will make it a required value. OK, um, I will not need any uh, content at the, at the page bottom, so I will skip this one. So I have defined my page content top. 
uh, my input elements. Now what I could do is essentially also add something like, um, please um, provide your account number. Uh, basically a message that will uh, guide the user as to what to enter in this field. So now I have my step get account number. As a next step, I want to create a menu of choices. I will skip the uh, backend validation here for the purposes of the demo. Um, so let me add a menu object. And I'm going to call this main menu. Again, I have my page content top, then menu items, and my page content bottom. Um, as page content top, what I will do is I will define, again, a heading here for main menu. And my items um, are going to be uh, essentially a balance inquiry. So I'm going to create a, a stub module here for this piece. Um, call it balance information. What I will do is I will create an output object that um, basically says under construction, just so that we have something here if the user picks that value. Uh, I will call it under construction. As my content for the page, I will also use the words under construction. Okay, that will save my, my balance information module. Um, how do I want to present this, this menu option on the screen? I need to define a menu item output. Um, so I will type in uh, something like balance info or balance information. This will become the label of the button that the uh, user can press later on. Um, I might want an icon for this, so I can, for example, um, use the forward icon and position it on the, on the right side. All right, uh, I will create another item. This will become um, a money transfer. Again, I will create a, a dummy module, for money transfer, just basically so that I, can, I have somewhere to go. I will reuse the under construction output that I defined in the previous step. So I put that here save it, and I will give this a name, uh, money transfer. Uh, let me add one more, just for the sake of it, uh, for product information. <clears throat> Again, I'll create a stop module, product information, and I will link the same under construction output. And I will give this product as my uh, label. Okay, so now we have a main menu with three items, and that will essentially be my application for now. So what do I have to do to deploy this? Well, all I have to do is uh, right-click my root module, select uh, Deploy Application and New Service. So I will actually go, uh, go ahead and deploy this as a demo service. So as you can see now here in the bottom right corner, it says deploying to service demo. This will actually put it on a application server, on CXP server that we have available here in our labs, uh, which also means I can hook this up with um, essentially uh, a, uh, a phone number uh, using uh, Evolution, which is our customer portal for our, our uh, IVR and, and text uh, applications. Um, and I will go ahead and do that. After logging into evolution.voxeo.com, um, I arrive at the overview page, and in here I will click uh, Application Manager, which allows me to add a new application uh, on our hosting side, which ultimately will allow me to add a new uh, phone number for my application. So I will give this application a name, I will call it uh, Demo, and uh, since we want this to be a voice and a text application, I will select both here. I will select a platform in which to run this, uh, premium ASR and TTS, uh, and ultimately provide the URL that points to the server that um, I have available here. So let me just configure this for my voice application as well as for my SMS application. I do want a phone number so I can test, so let me pick one of these. Uh, let's see, maybe I'll pick a Orlando-based phone number, 321. So I can select this. This is a free service that we have for developers and for customers that want to you know, build and evaluate applications. So I will just go ahead and create that application, which will ultimately provide a phone number for me. It will take a couple of minutes to propagate through our network. So even though I already see the phone number that I will have, 
321-239-1510, I will go ahead and first show you the demo of this application as a web application. Uh, remember, this is what I promised you earlier. Now, I, can, I have two ways to um, demo a web application. I can use the built-in uh, phone simulator, so let me go ahead and do that. We'll start the session and it will come with a simulated phone screen and as you can see here we have our headline welcome please provide your account number we have the placeholder here so i can type in my number hit ok and i arrive at the main menu you will see we forgot to configure icons for the second and third item so if i select one of these we will arrive at our under construction step so this is very basic, of course, so now you could go ahead and add some cascading style sheets, um, add a jQuery mobile theme roller, roller, because this is what we essentially use as a framework, uh, jQuery mobile underneath. Um, but you get the idea. So this is a fully functional mobile web app that we build using our uh, graphical drag and drop environment here. The second way I can test my application is through the use of one of the simulators that come with the respective operating systems. So for instance, on my laptop I have um, the iOS simulator so that I can test my application and demonstrate my application through um, a simulation of the iPhone. So let me go to Safari and actually enter the URL that uh, points to uh, my particular server here, my particular application, and um, by doing that I will see the first page. So welcome, please provide your account number. Now before actually doing this, um, let me add this application to my home screen so that it appears as an actual uh, uh, native application almost. So I will have an icon on my home screen and if I launch it from here, um, it will come up without the URL bar, without the navigation bar, so I can pretty much interact with it with this as if it was an actual native application. So here's my main menu, I can enter the options, etc. So it works pretty well. Um, also, keep in mind that we also offer a QR code down here. So if you have a phone, um, you can essentially take a picture of this. And uh, if the phone is in the same network as your computer, you can then try this application on your real phone. Now, to call this application as an IVR application, I will actually have to make a few more configurations here on our objects. Um, to configure some grammars for IVR, etc. So to do that, I will switch the view from the web view uh, over to the all view, essentially. So I want to now configure all the different channels at the same time. Um, the uh, view here will refresh, um, and now if I open an object, um, I will see a couple more settings, more than I had seen before, and some of the sections have already uh, also been renamed um, to accommodate the other channels. So what, you, what we do see here is our um, initial request, uh, please provide your account number. Now this was tagged with channel web. I want to create um, another item here for the text channel. So I want to create a channel text and the message here would be, please uh, send your eight digit account number. In the voice channel, I want to announce something like, please say or enter your eight digit account number. So I'm going to create a third item, tag that with channel voice, and enter the prompt. Please say or enter your eight-digit account number. Now what I might want to do in addition for the voice channel is play a greeting um, at the beginning. Uh, this is something that you don't necessarily have to do in the visual channels. I will do that as an, as an extra step in front of the uh, input object in a second. Let me just configure the grammar here, which I will require for the voice channel. So in voice, um, I will go ahead and we'll use the uh, digits grammar, which is the built-in grammar from my IVR platform. Uh, set type to built-in, and I will do the same for DTMF so that caller can then also use touchstone input. Uh, in addition, I will create a grammar for the text channel uh, that will essentially be a so-called regular expression, which um, I can use to further restrict the input. So in this case, I want 0 to 9 8 times, and that is my regular expression. Okay, the result handling, the variable here, will stay the same account number in both the voice and the text channel. That's all I had to do here uh, for main menu. Now let me go ahead and um, actually... Uh, Make sure that all the announcements here are correct. So menu item output 
I want to use the same bounce information um, output for my voice and my text channel. So I will basically set channel to default so that it'll, it will be used regardless of the channel. So let me make that change on the two remaining items. Product info, the same thing. Menu item output, I want this to be used, whatever the channel is. And I will create um, some auto numbering here so I get TTMF till it's assigned. All right. Now I did want to uh, add a step for the greetings, so I will create an output object, um, greet caller. But I will make this, um, welcome to Smart Bank. I will make this dependent on the channel. So I will actually create a precondition for this to say that only process this if um, channel equals voice. So uh, that will be my argument here. In that case, uh, if at runtime this session is a web session or an interactive text session, this step would be skipped. Okay, now let me redeploy my application. Again, deploy demo. And now I'm ready to give this uh, a try under the phone number that I have configured. All right, so let me go ahead and dial that number. It's going to be 321-239-1510. And I'm going to put it on speakerphone so you can hear it. Please save and enter your eight digit account number. I'm going to use touch tone here to enter that. Main menu, balance information, money transfer, product information. Money transfer. Under construction. Main All menu. right, perfect. That's exactly balance how we programmed it. Money okay, transfer. great. Product so let's give SMS a try. I have the same number here, and I'm going to start by sending an initial message to kick off the conversation. So I'm going to send hi, and I should get back immediately the uh, first prompt of the application, which is the account number question. There it is. Please send your eight-digit account number. So I'm going to enter uh, some random eight digits here to progress the dialogue, and next I should get the main menu with my three options. And there it is. Perfect. I hope you liked what you saw. If you want to give it a try yourself, go to voxeo.com slash free, where you can download all of our products for free for evaluation. Thank you and goodbye.